In this example, we're given the molecular formula of a compound. And our goal is to use this NMR spectrum to determine the exact chemical structure of this compound. How can we do this? Now, because we have only three carbon atoms, it might be wise to draw the different ways in which we could represent this molecule. So let's draw all the constitutional isomers of C3H7Br. So we have three carbon atoms. Now there's only two locations in which we could put the bromine atom. We could put it on carbon one, or we can put it on carbon two. So it's either one bromopropane or two bromopropane. But now let's draw these molecules a different way. So we could draw one bromopropane like this. CH3, CH2, CH2, Br. Now, 2-bromopropane will look like this. It's basically an isopropyl group attached to a bromine atom. So, looking at these two structures, which one corresponds to the NMR spectrum that we see here? Now, the simplest way to get the answer is to count the number of signals. How many signals should we get for this molecule? Or how many different types of protons do you see? This is proton A, proton B, proton C. These three protons in the methyl group will show up as one signal. But they're different from these two protons because they exist in a different chemical environment. These protons are closer to the bromine atom than the ones in the methyl group. So they will show up as a different signal. So therefore, this molecule cannot represent the structure that we see here because it has a total of three signals, whereas we need two signals. Now let's analyze the second molecule. We know by default this has to be the answer, but let's understand why. These two methyl groups are identical to each other. They exist in the exact same chemical environment. So therefore, they will show up as one signal, which we can refer to it as signal A. Signal B has to be the CH group because that's different from the methyl groups. So right then and there, we can see that we have the two signals. Now, which peak corresponds to signal A and which one corresponds to signal B? What would you say? Well, looking at the chemical shift, the chemical shift for a CH next to a bromine atom is usually around 3 to 4. So therefore, this has to be signal B. And this will be signal A. A methyl group typically is around 1-ish. But if it's one carbon away from a carbon with a bromine atom, it's going to be a little bit more downfield or towards the left, so it's going to be a little bit more than one. Now let's look at the splitting pattern. The CH group is adjacent to six hydrogen atoms. So using the N plus one rule, we're going to get basically a signal with uh, seven peaks. And so this is going to be a septet. Now analyzing the splitting pattern of the methyl group, because these two are identical to each other, you only need to focus on one at a time. So focusing on this methyl group, it's only adjacent to one hydrogen atom. And so using the N plus one rule, one plus one is two. And so we can see the doublet that we have here around 1.4, 1.5. And so it's very clear that this structure represents two bromopropane, or we can call it isopropyl bromide. Now let's move on to our next example, C4H9Br. Now I recommend you pause the video and try this example. So based on the last example, use what you've learned to draw the chemical structure that corresponds to this particular NMR uh, spectrum. And then once you have your solution, you know, play the video to see if the answer is correct. So let's begin. 
Let's draw the different constitutional isomers for C4H9Br. And let's do so using line structures initially. So the first thing we can do is we can put all four carbons in a straight chain. Now we can add a bromine atom on carbon one. So this is going to be one bromobutane or we can add a bromine atom on carbon two. And this is going to be two bromobutane. Now, instead of having a straight structure, like a straight line structure, this could be a branch structure. So we could have four carbons like that. And then we could put the bromine atom on the primary carbon, or we could put the bromine atom on the tertiary carbon. So those are the four possibilities that we can get for C4H9Br. Now, let's convert the line structure into a condensed structure. So let's start with one bromobutane. Now this particular carbon atom is attached to one other carbon atom. So this is going to be a CH3. You always have a methyl group at the end of a carbon chain. This carbon atom has two hydrogen atoms and it's attached to two of the carbon atoms. So keep in mind carbon can only form four bonds at most. So next we have a CH2 and this too also has two hydrogen atoms, so that's going to be a CH2. This last carbon has two hydrogen atoms and a bromine, so that's going to be CH2Br. So that's the condensed structure for one bromobutane. Now let's do the same for two bromobutane. So we always have a methyl group at the end. So this is going to be CH3. Next, we have a methylene group of CH2. This carbon is connected to two carbon atoms and a bromine atom. So there's only one hydrogen left since carbon has four bonds. So this is going to be a CH attached to a bromine atom. And here we have a methyl group. So that's two bromobutane. Now here we have one bromo, two methyl propane. So let's convert that into a condensed structure. So let's focus on this tertiary carbon first. That carbon is attached to three other carbon atoms. So the fourth bond must be a bond to a hydrogen atom. So I'm gonna draw that first, that's CH. And then we have two methyl groups. So we have a CH3 on top and a CH3 on the bottom. And then this is a CH2, there's two hydrogens on it, attached to a bromine atom. So we have CH2Br. Now, finally, let's convert this one into a condensed structure. So we have a carbon here, and there's no hydrogens on this carbon because that carbon is quaternary. It already has four bonds. But we do have three methyl groups. So we could simply just write the three methyl groups. So that's tert butyl bromide. And we can get rid of this. So those are the four condensed structures that we can draw for C4H9Br. Now, what do you recommend that we should do next in order to identify the correct chemical structure? Let's use the process of elimination. So looking at our proton NMR spectrum, we have four signals, one, two, three, four. So let's eliminate the structures that do not contain four signals. So for this structure, this is gonna be signal A, B, C, D. We have four different types of hydrogen atoms, so we can't eliminate that one. For this one too, this, we can call this A, B, C, and D. So that too has uh, four different structures, I mean four different signals. Now for this structure, these three, I mean these three methyl groups, they will appear as one signal. So we can definitely eliminate that structure because it doesn't have four different types of hydrogen atoms. So this is not the answer that we're looking for. 
Now looking at the next example, these two methyl groups are identical. So they will appear as one signal, which we can call signal A. And then we have a CH group, that's B, and then the CH2Br group. So there's three different types of hydrogen atoms in that chemical structure. We don't have four. So this molecule will give us three signals, not four. So now we have two options. We need to determine if it's going to be, we'll call this structure number one or structure number two. That is, is it going to be two bromobutane or one bromobutane? So let's find out. So what we have here is a triplet. This is a doublet. And here, this is a, a quintet. And we have a sextet or six signals. So let's identify the splitting pattern for the hydrogen atoms in this structure. So proton A, what's going to be the splitting pattern for the methyl group here? Well, if you look at the adjacent carbon, it has two hydrogen atoms. Using the n plus 1 rule, 2 plus 1 is 3. So this will appear as a triplet. Now for protons B, there's five adjacent hydrogen atoms. So using the n plus 1 rule, 5 plus 1 is 6. So this will appear as a sextet. Now for proton C, this is 2 plus 2, which is 4, and then plus 1, that's 5. So this will appear as a quintet. Now for signal D, or the protons that correspond to signal D, there's only two hydrogen atoms adjacent to it, or on the adjacent carbon. 2 plus 1 is 3, so we're going to get a triplet. So note that we do not get a doublet with this particular structure. So that tells us that we could eliminate this one, which means 2 bromobutane must be our answer. But let's confirm it. So let's call this proton A, or signal A, B, C, and D. So this methyl group is adjacent to two hydrogen atoms. 2 plus 1 is 3, so that's going to appear as a triplet. For signal B, the CH2 is adjacent to 3 plus 1, or 4 hydrogen atoms. So plus 1, that's going to be 5. We're going to get a quintet. And for signal C, we have 2 plus 3, or 5 adjacent hydrogen atoms, plus 1. So that's going to be a, a sextet. And for the last one, the CH3, it's adjacent to 1 hydrogen atom. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we get a doublet. Thus, this structure has all the signals that we need. So we have a sextet here, which is between 3 to 4, or it has a chemical shift between 3 to 4 due to the electronegative bromine atom attached to the CH group. So that makes sense. This CH3, we can see a doublet just above 1. And for signal B, we can see it's a quartet between 1 and 2. And then the last one, the CH3 at the end, that one is further upfield and it's a triplet. It's further away from the carbon with the bromine atom, so it's more shielded. Thus, it has the lowest chemical shift. So that's it for uh, this particular example. So that's one way in which you could draw the chemical structure given the proton NMR spectrum.